What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. Um, in this tutorial we're just going to have a little bit of fun and uh, play around with using scatter a little bit. Um, if you saw my video yesterday, um, I gave kind of an overview of scatter. It's a plugin that allows you to randomly scatter objects um, around your SketchUp model. So we're just going to kind of play around with it and have some fun and see what we can do with it. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna draw a circle so just uh, just a little circle just like this and uh, what we're doing is we're basically creating a sphere in here so we're gonna create a second circle we're gonna use the follow me tool and then you're just gonna click on that to create a circle like this and remember the way scatter works is uh, you basically have to scatter things inside of a group um, or a line or some or like like a group set of lines that kind of thing so what we're gonna do is we're gonna double click on our sphere you may need to triple click on your sphere and then I just come in here and click make group and then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna draw a little cone so to do that we're just gonna use the follow me tool again just to extrude that shape so just create a little uh, circle and then a little triangle uh, select this path and then uh, use follow me tool to create a uh, to create a cone kind of like this and then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna make this a component and we'll just call it spike so now that we've done that uh, you need to have scatter installed on your computer and remember that has a 15 day free trial so you can go to uh, the sketchup essentials.com slash scatter in order to uh, download it but anyway uh, you're gonna come in here and you're gonna launch scatter and what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here and you're gonna start off and you're gonna select your host or you're gonna select the object that you're gonna scatter things on top of so in that case that's gonna be your sphere like this so click on this uh, pick a group surface click on your sphere and then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come down here and you're going to pick an object to scatter so in this case we're gonna come in here and we're gonna select our spike so and if you start off if you generate that that doesn't really do a whole lot for us it just puts a spike on here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna select faces centers so come down to distribution and basically what you're telling it is on the center of each face you want it to drop a spike in so we're gonna start off doing that so come in here click faces centers and then if you go ahead and generate that it's not going to do exactly what you want because it keeps everything um, it keeps everything pointing in the same direction as your original so what you want to do is you can want to go over to this uh, pointing up slider and go over and drag that over to normal just like that and what that does is it means that every object it places it pointing up or pointing out on your object so if you click regenerate in here you can see what it does is it comes in here and it puts basically one of these points on every single face in your sphere so if I come in here and hide these and then uh, if you take a look at your sphere just like this if I triple click on it to select all the faces it's basically putting a spike in the middle of each one of these points and that's cool if you if you just want to leave it like that you can definitely do that uh, it's kind of a cool look what I don't like about it though is when you start getting to the top you start having issues with the way things kind of run into each other um, so it is kind of a cool uh, shape but I want to mess around with that a little bit more so I want to create more of a random type um, random type ball with spikes on it so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna check this box that says collisions okay and when you come in here and you check the box that says collisions then it's going to come in here and create this object so only the points that it puts in here um, so only the objects that it puts in here none of them overlap with anything else and then what we can do is we can come in here and we can fool around with the size multiplier a little bit and add some more points in here and I don't know what happens If you come in here and put your size multiplier really low, then it's just going to kind of go back to the way that it was. But if you come in here and you put this at like 80% or something like that, or you'd probably go as low as 60, and then hit regenerate, you can see what that does is that just like randomly puts this over here and it tries not to, uh, not to have objects that collide. It's not always successful, but it's pretty close. Um, I'm actually going to jump this back up to 70. 
So I kind of like this shape. It's got this kind of uh, it's got this ball with these uh, general shapes on it. But what I don't like is if you come in here and you look at these like this, you can tell that they're not actually flat on your face, right? They just kind of uh, they just kind of run up and so they're not actually like flush with your face so they don't look like they're a part of the ball. And the way that we're going to fix that is we're going to use the scale tool um, in uniform mode to just make your ball a little bit bigger so that it covers up the bases of these so they look like they're kind of an integral part of this ball. So what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you're going to single click on this ball and then you're going to tap that S key to turn the scale tool on and select one of the corner points and hold the control key when you do this that'll give you that uniform scale around the center so it'll basically take your ball and make it bigger um, in all the different dimensions and you're just gonna drag it out until it covers up all of those points so and you can just kinda look at them you can just kinda look at them and see you know if you were to take this ball and make it smaller that's what that would look like or you can come in here and make it bigger like I'm doing There we go. So now what you've got is this ball with a whole bunch of points on it, just like this. And it kind of looks like a fun kid's toy um, if it was made of rubber or um, more like a medieval weapon, I guess, if it wasn't. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add a color to it. So probably like we'll make it a pink color. And we'll come in here and we'll add this color. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to render that color in Twilight Render as kind of a rubber material. So um, if you don't have Twilight Render, you can go to uh, Twilight Render's website. Just Google Twilight Render. And uh, I like their free version the best because it doesn't watermark anything or anything like that. So it's a really good hobby version. I recommend you check it out. But basically what, what you do is you select a material in here using the eyedropper tool and then you use one of its templates. So in this case, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select, uh, there's a rubber ball and there's also a wax. I'm going to go ahead and select the wax. Um, so basically what that's telling it is take this pink material, this color L04, and give it the properties of a wax object. And then all I have to do is come in here and render it. So I can come in here. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to set this on preliminary. So if you're not familiar with rendering, uh, you can get very, very, very in-depth and spend a long time on it, hours and hours. Or you can just come in here and do like a quick render uh, just to kind of see what something looks like. So you can render it real quick and see what it'll look like. And then you can come in here and pick something a little more in-depth, like a low plus or something like that. And it'll get rid of some of the like graininess that's in here. So we're just going to let that run for a second and see how this is a lot more smooth now. So that's where I'm going to wrap up today's video. Um, you can go in and save this image through Twilight Render so you have like a JPEG of it or stuff like that. But um, in any case, uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. But I just wanted to say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click that like button down below. Um, if you're new around here, make sure you click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. Um, coming, up with a, coming out with a lot of new videos every week. I'd love to have you along for the ride. And uh, finally, leave a comment below. Let me know uh, if you've done anything like this in the past. If uh, you like this plugin, if you think it's a little too expensive, uh, just kind of let me know what you think. I love having a SketchUp conversation with you guys. And also just hearing your ideas and hearing what you've done in the past. So um, anyway, that's where I'm going to wrap this up. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.